It is day 99, and all eyes are on President Trump and what his administration has accomplished since he took off. That's right. He hits that 100-day benchmark tomorrow, and we know you guys have something to say about it. We invite you to weigh in. Let us know how you would grade the president's performance. As you can see from the rundown on the side of your screen, this is what we are talking about at 6.30 tonight. So tweet us right now and use that hashtag, 5 at 6.30. All right, let's get to it. From executive orders on immigration and the environment to battles over health care and the new Supreme Court justice, those are just some of the memorable moments from President Trump's first 100 days. And joining us to break down these first 100 days are Stephen Rowe, campus reform contributor, Chelsea Short, contributor for TAG Magazine. And also joining us via Skype is Robert McCall, Director of Government Affairs for CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you for um, before we go through all this, I want to let our audience know it was important for us to get a diverse audience here. Stephen, you're a conservative millennial. Chelsea, you're a member of the LGBTQ community. And Robert is a government affairs manager for the nation's largest Muslim civil liberties and advocacy organization. I want to kind of go to each one of you. Just give me a grade. Just give me a grade on how you would grade these first 100 days. Stephen, let's start with you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'd love to go ahead and give President Trump a, a B, and I'll tell you why. First, okay, don't tell us why. First Hear from everybody. <laughs> You're great. I'm Chelsea. I'm giving him a D. A D? Okay. Because oh, I'm generous. Okay. <laughs> Robert? Robert? Let's give him a D minus. A D minus. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. So should we start with the, the person who gave him a the B? B. Go ahead. Yeah. Know why. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, on, on the foreign policy side of things, I, I would love to give him an A. Mm -hmm. And then on the domestic side of things, I would probably give him more of a C. But uh, millennials who voted for, for Donald Trump certainly have a lot to write home about. Mm -hmm. And what we see all the time at the Leadership Institute's campus reform is millennials, what they want when they graduate is a job. And they really want to start a business as well. And the policies that Trump is enacting or trying to enact, lowering the business tax from 35 percent to 15 percent, cutting back regulations is certainly the step in the right direction for those millennials trying to get going and get their first start. All right, Chelsea, you want to respond to that or explain why you gave him a D minus? Well, I gave him a D. D. Okay. D. Him a D. <laughs> um, when I think about uh, how he's uh, rescinded some of President Obama's executive orders when it comes to protecting LGBT uh, Americans from uh, discrimination for federal contractors, especially in our city, considering you know our, our workforce here, that has a significant impact uh, on us. Uh, when I think about uh, rescinding the guidelines for how we treat trans students in our public schools, that uh, that weighs heavy on me, and I and I and I can't look fondly on on those choices. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when I think about um, immigration and uh, the. LGBT people exist there as well when I think about uh, his deportation force or the, the surge in deportation, mm -hmm. deportation. We're talking about LGBT families that are also affected by those, those and, choices. And speaking of immigration, Robert, you gave the D minus, the, the lowest grade here. I imagine that has something to do uh, with your opinion as well. Definitely. So it's the president's job to uphold the U.S. Constitution. So far, he's had two immigration related executive orders one, a Muslim ban, other penalizing cities that do not hand over undocumented immigrants where they face sanctions and they've been held up in the courts as either being executive overreach or just plainly discriminatory and if the president can't uphold the constitution if the president's relying on discrimination whether it's religious discrimination racial discrimination then he's not doing his job right and moreover the president has picked a number selected a number of advisors he's made a number of nominations these are people that have track records uh, where they're making anti-minority statements, anti-LGBT statements, anti-Muslim statements. And really, the president has surrounded himself with advisors that don't look out for the whole of the American population. Robert, is the, lone, hold, Robert is the lone conservative here. Do you want to Stephen. respond? I'm sorry. Excuse There's so me. many people. That's going Robert. No Stephen, my apologies. Is the lone conservative <laughs> yeah. here uh, on our panel? Do you want to respond to, to what Robert said? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it all fundamentally circles back for the American people. The most important issue that people in the middle class care about is the economy. Mm -hmm. And what we see time and time again, especially millennials, and I can speak on that, uh, you know, as a former college student and a lot of them out there, they graduate with over $35,000 mm -hmm. of college debt. And the only way you're able to solve that is by fixing the economy. And I think that's the right direction that, that Trump is moving in. He's, he's certainly pushing the, the ball forward in that case. I know you also were mentioning foreign policy. Absolutely. Um, you, why do you believe he deserves an A in that area? 
Well, the big issue right now is, is NAFTA, and uh, that's a big foreign policy issue. You're trading between Canada, you're trading between Mexico, and uh, this is, this is an, an instance where Bernie supporters are on the Trump train with mm -hmm. NAFTA, and they support uh, you know, more fair trade agreements that, that Trump's been pushing to have jobs at home and have American workers fueling the American economy and jobs coming back home. I know people have been critical um, that the president, he, he, although he's gotten a number of executive orders that were written, he's no significant legislation. Earlier today, he spoke to Fox News's um, Martha McCallum, and she asked him, you know, is Congress getting in your way or what do you feel about Congress? Let's listen to what he had to say. In terms of legislation, you're going to see everywhere on Saturday that there was no major legislation passed in the first hundred days. You have a Republican Congress. You know, that's been a wrong. That's really wrong. First of all, we had 28 bills. Are you disappointed with how the Republicans have handled these big issues? Health care went down the first time. Yeah, I'm disappointed. And there was it is a very tough system. All right, so he said he was disappointed there. Let me ask you, Chelsea. I mean, are you surprised? We got a Republican president. We got a Republican-controlled Congress. Are you surprised they haven't gotten more done? Uh, I'm pleased that they haven't gotten more done. Okay. Uh, but I, I can't say that I'm surprised. Uh, you know, when Trump was coming through the campaign trail, there was a lot of... It seemed like Riff said uh, there were a lot of Republicans who didn't necessarily support him or see them as a leader for their party. Mm -hmm. So it's not surprising that they're having some troubles coming together now. Mm -hmm. Robert, uh, we haven't heard from you a little bit. Led, tell me what your thoughts are on, uh, on specifically him being disappointed in, that he couldn't get anything done. And are you surprised as well that uh, given the Republicans' uh, majority here? You know, I'm not surprised because Trump isn't necessarily a Republican. He just ran on the Republican ticket. When you look at Trump's policies, it's not necessarily... He wanted to drain the swamp. He was looking to outsiders for advice. And this advice, again, it, it's, it comes in conflict with a lot of American values, a lot of constitutional values, and we just don't see that connect between Republican leadership and the Trump administration. In fact, we see factions. Guys, if we could just, we, we have like, we're out of time, but if you could just say one thing, if you would like to see um, this administration focus on for the future or do better at, can you give me one thing? Chelsea? Uh, equal pay. That's not All right. Mm. Stephen? I think uh, the health care bill right now that's been reintroduced, I think it's going to work really well. Robert? This administration promised surveillance and infiltration on Muslim communities. I think we need a uniter. So let the president focus on uniting the nation. All right. Stephen Rowe from Campus Reform, Chelsea Short, contributor for Tag Magazine, and Robert McGall, director of uh, Government Affairs for Care. Thank you guys all for being here. We appreciate your perspective.